to love you beautiful wonders of spiritual level of being. Nathan here from Spiritual Level of Being, and yes, you have a spiritual level of being. And today we're going to be doing a part two of Gnosticism and Symbolism versus Orthodoxy Christianity and Literal Reading. Now, the Gnostic Christians were the elites of ancient Christianity, as they were those who were initiated into the mysteries, meaning they understood the esoteric meanings of the text, they understood the meanings of the sayings of Jesus. Now, this is why in the ancient past they were associated with prophecy and associated with deep insights into spiritual knowledge. This is why other Christian factions that would join Catholicism and Orthodoxy were ones who didn't understand these meanings and thus would persecute them. Now, Jesus also spoke about those who would understand the meanings of his sayings would be persecuted and he also warned of those who would come and persecute others in his name. So, this here is a prophecy about the Gnostic Christians who actually understood the teachings of Jesus and thus were persecuted by the Catholics and Orthodox Church, those who didn't understand the mysteries. Now, Matthew 13.10, Jesus has here, he's speaking in parables and the disciples ask him why. Now, the reason why is because they're not ready for the whole meal. They're only ready for the milk like babies. So this is the stepping stones in order for them one day to wake up and realize the mysteries and hope that they will. Now, Jesus also states to the disciples, he's given it to them, but not to them because this meaning that they are able to understand it more now this is why the gnostics talk about the secret initiates those who understand the meanings thus having secret teachings of jesus so let's go read matthew 13.10 then the disciples came to jesus and asked him why do you use parables when you talk to the people jesus answered the knowledge gnosis about the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. For the person who has something will be given more, so that he will have more than enough. But the person who has nothing will have taken away from him even the little he has. The reason I use parables in talking to them is that they look, but they do not see, and they listen, but do not hear or understand. So this is meaning that they're not ready for the mysteries, they don't understand them. So this is why Gnostic Christians are able to understand the deeper meanings of these texts. Now in the Gospel of John 14.12, Jesus states that whoever believes in him will do as he does and they will do even greater things. Now in the Gospel of Thomas saying 108, Jesus states that whoever drinks from my mouth will become like me and I will become like he. So that means that whoever understands what Jesus is talking about and enacts them into his life will become like Christ themselves, like Jesus themselves. They'll become Christ-like, being reborn again, having discovered the spirit within, having the Holy Spirit pour upon them. So this, again, the rebirth. So understanding the mysteries. Now you're initiated into the mysteries. You truly understand. So now you're doing even greater things than what you were previously able to do in your old life as you're being reborn again. So this is the baptism by fire, baptism by the Holy Spirit. The Gnostic Christians didn't deny having superior knowledge than the regular Christian. They understood that they were on a higher level and viewed the rest of Christendom more like infants, not quite ready for the whole meal, but only ready for the milk. They're not ready for the plant. They're not ready for the meat. Now, this means they're not ready for the insights of knowledge. So they viewed this as a responsibility to help guide other Christians as they viewed them as not quite there yet. So with hopes of them being ready for the mysteries, they themselves would level up, they would ascend. Now, we can see the writers of Colossians and Timothy expressing their dislike for the Gnostic Christians, warning other Christians to stay away from those claiming to have knowledge, no matter how good their arguments are. And when this didn't work, they would turn to persecutions. So they would start attacking the Gnostics, burning them alive and burning their books. Now, this is because Gnostics didn't deny having secret books. They didn't deny having older texts than the Catholics and Orthodox. Now, this is why the Gnostics would in turn use compassion when they were persecuted in hopes that these other Christians in turn would wake up to themselves to again be reborn to understand the mysteries themselves and to stop the endless cycle of suffering and violence. Now, because Jesus warned those who would persecute those who understood his teachings in his name, the Gnostics knew what would happen. They also understood that history repeats itself and they were deep believers of reincarnation. So they understood that this persecution was nothing new and it's happened before. As they understood that the Christians took on a war god, they took on Yahweh, Yah to pay off. Now, we can find in Exodus 15.3 that they say that the Lord is a warrior. So this is belonging to a warrior religion. So when you remove the esoteric knowledge, you have contradictions. This is why you have the Abrahamic faiths of today fighting each other. Now, Yahweh was a war god. 
Now, he originally belonged to the Canaanite pathogens, the Elohim being a son of El. Now, the Israelites want to separate themselves from their distant ancestors, the Canaanites, and so they would persecute those who would worship Asherah and Baal, and we would find this in the Bible, but they don't mention how they themselves were once a part of this culture, and they split off and made a new one. So in turn, they would persecute the older religions and even the goddess worship, which in turn also held a lot of the esoteric knowledge. Orthodoxy Christianity, meaning Catholicism, Orthodox, and Protestantism, is you have to have blind belief. You have to believe in Jesus. You have to believe in God. Now, with Gnostic Christianity, one had to make an effort to look within. So it wasn't about blind belief. It was about obtaining spiritual knowledge within oneself, to be like Christ yourself, to have the Holy Spirit pour upon you, to discover the spirit within you, the divine spark, so that your connection to God. So to realize that you are God, that you are one with God, that God is all around you, that God is unknowable and only knowable for you. So the part of God that you understand is you. So your divine twin. So your inner Christ, your inner spirit, your divine double. Now, this was also about the rebirth. So understanding yourself. So knowing yourself, to realize the mind is the treasure, to reorganize yourself and to reconstruct yourself, that's the rebirth of self. In orthodoxy Christianity, to be reborn again means to submit and to love God and Jesus, to fear God and love God. This also means to leave behind your old life, to be a Christian now, so your new life as a Christian, so do your best to stop sinning and to rebuild a relationship with God to have a relationship with God means to submit to God and to love him. Now, in Gnostic Christianity, to be reborn again means to rebirth a self, to discover the spirit within, as discovering the spirit within is like discovering Jesus. To be like Jesus yourself, thus being Christ like yourself. This means to have the Holy Spirit pour upon you. So, to have a connection with yourself and the God within, the spirit within. Now, the baptism by Holy Spirit here, this again is with Christianity, they've lost this meaning as it means to have the Holy Spirit pour upon you, to be reborn again, to be Christ like yourself. So this is rooted in Gnosticism. Now within all religions, there's Gnosis, spiritual knowledge, esoteric knowledge. Now, you'll see some church leaders try to deny that there's an esoteric Christianity. This is false. There always was an esoteric Christianity and you can find within the text esoteric meanings. So you can find symbolic meanings. Whenever you see a priest try to explain a meaning behind a text, this is an esoteric act as he's looking within himself or herself to discover the mysteries behind the text. Now, esoteric means only the initiator will understand. Only a select few will understand, not made for the public. So this is why Jesus spoke in parables, as the public weren't ready to understand it. They would persecute him and this is why you see in the text the rabbis calling him blasphemous and people wanting to stone him now in the writings of paul we find heavy gnostic elements as they couldn't remove it all as it's argued that paul was a gnostic or that there were two pauls one was saul who was persecuting the nazarenes and ebonites the jewish christians who in turn they called him a heretic but it's argued that they swapped this role around so that way it was seen that this gnostic paul was a heretic and not this saul However, Paul's story could be a mixture of Simon Magus and Marcion mixed together. However, let's go to this story here, because it mentions about those not ready to understand the mysteries, those who aren't ready to be initiated into them, those who aren't ready for the full meal, not ready for the meat, but only ready for the milk. So this here is in the sayings of servant of God in the first Corinthians 3. As a matter of fact, my brothers, I could not talk to you as I talk to... People who have the Spirit, meaning having the Holy Spirit pour upon them, searching the Spirit within, those who have searched for the Spirit within, those who are Christ-like themselves, who understand the mysteries. I had to talk to you as though you belong to this world, as children in the Christian faith. I had to feed you with milk, not solid food, because you were not ready for it, not ready for the mysteries, not ready to understand them. And even now you are not ready for it, because you still live as the people of this world live. When there is jealousy among you and you quarrel with one another, doesn't this prove that you belong to this world, living by its standards? So this here is rooted in Gnosticism, living of this world, living in corruption, living in ignorance, not knowing their self, not contacting the spirit within, not searching within yourself to realize that God is within you, that Christ is within you. So this is when you act in accordance to love as love is Christ, love is God. Now, unless one searches for the spirit within, 
contacts the spirit within. They're unable to understand the mysteries of God. They're unable to see God within them and will forever seek outside of themselves and forever be caught up in ignorance. This is what this text here means in the first Corinthians 2.13. So then, we do not speak in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, the Spirit within. As we explain spiritual truths, the spiritual truths within, to those who have the Spirit. Whoever does not have the Spirit cannot receive the gifts that come from God's Spirit. So they're unable to comprehend them. So they forever see God as outside of them. So they live in ignorance. They live in an illusion. So let's go read the beginning of this text, which is heavily Gnostic inspired. Yet I do proclaim a message of wisdom to those who are spiritually mature, those who understand the mysteries, who are able to comprehend them, are the ones who are mature. But it is not the wisdom that belongs to this world, as it's wisdom within, or to the powers that rule this world, powers that are losing their power. The wisdom I proclaim is God's secret wisdom, which is hidden from mankind, because they're caught up in illusion, caught up in ignorance, so not taking action to search within but which he had already chosen for our glory even before the world was made. None of the rulers of this world knew this wisdom. If they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, being Christ. So they wouldn't have done it if they knew better, if they were able to see Christ within them. So again, this secret wisdom, the wisdom of God. So this is the knowledge within you. Now, the rulers of this world being corrupted, so they themselves are also living in ignorance. So some Gnostics would view them being controlled by the Archons and Yara Bayof. And in modern Christianity, Satan. In orthodoxy Christianity, to know or to experience God is only possible through the church and through its dogma, to be an unconditional believer, to have blind faith. Now Gnostic Christianity is to know thyself is to know God. To search within is to search for God. To search within is like searching for Christ. So to be like Jesus is to be Christ like yourself. So here we have a very big key difference. And in Gnostic Christianity, this term is much more useful. So thank you so much for joining me on this discussion. I hope you've all enjoyed. Many blessings, peace and love. Connect to all my mind and soul. Namaste.